It is with sadness, friends, that I bring you the bad news that the parish church St Cuthbert's was attacked last night by a group of vandals who broke in through the vestry window. The perpetrators then sprinkled dried coconuts all over the altar. Police are appealing for anyone who can help find those responsible for this act of desiccation. This morning, friends, on this Sunday that we call Ascension Sunday, we remember the moment when Jesus was lifted up. He ascended into heaven. To remind ourselves of the story, it comes from Acts chapter 1. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. We have a traditional view that Jesus carried on rising, like a Chinese lantern or a helium balloon, rather like Mary Poppins, until he was just a tiny dot in the endless blue sky heading off into outer space. At this point, with the disciples bickering over whether the speck was in fact Jesus or a passing helicopter, our traditional interpretation faces something of a spanner in the ointment. For Jesus, in his final 40 days on earth, after his resurrection, had impressed mightily upon his followers that he was not a ghost, like Casper in the book of Isaiah. He was real, made of flesh and bone, particles and atoms, muscles and oysters. Does it really sound plausible that this Jesus in his resurrection body then went soaring through space holding his breath like a ventriloquist? Frankly, that sounds unlikely. And we know that he did not stop off at the moon because footprints remained there forever and they would have been noticed when the Americans landed. No, it is agreed that the first man on the moon was indeed Louis Armstrong. So here, friends, is the dilemma. Where did Jesus go? Another biblical mystery which would need a detective with the skills of Poirot or Houdini. The clue, I believe, that we have often overlooked in our haste is there in the Bible reading. And a cloud received him out of their sight. There is no evidence that Jesus floated up like a penguin, circling on the thermals all the way to the edge of the atmosphere. The hard fact we have here is that a cloud received him from their sight. In fact, clouds are associated with God on a frequent basis in the Bible. In the wilderness, the Lord went before the Israelites by day in a pillar of a cloud to lead the way. In Job 22, And thou sayest, how doth God know? Can he judge through the dark cloud? Job 26, He holdeth back the face of his throne, and spreadeth his cloud upon it. Psalm 104 says, who layeth the beams of his chambers in the waters? Who maketh the clouds his chariot? Matthew 17, While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Matthew 24, And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven, with power and great glory. And Revelation chapter 1. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. For truly, friends, it seems that God resides in the clouds. And if this is so, then wherever it is cloudy, that is where God is also. God is very present and close to the Cornish. If God is in the clouds, then truly we can sing with gusto, our God reigns. And also over all the earth, you reign on high. Moses was called up to the top of Mount Sinai to receive the tablets of stone from within a cloud.
world. Ask yourselves how many times did Jesus go up a mountain to pray? Jesus was either a very keen hiker, armed with compass, boots, whistle, candle, mint cake and an ordnance survey map that you just can't fold up again properly, or he found he was close to God at the top of a mountain, in the clouds. We remember the story of the Transfiguration, where Jesus was up a mountain with Peter and James and John, and they were met by Elijah and Moses, and they were in the clouds. But surely as night follows day, an ant follows death. Heaven cannot really be in the clouds.